Hi everyone, this is Natasha from Customer Success at Action Step and this is a quick introduction into document and email templating. It is just an introduction uh, so I won't go too in depth but I'm just going to show you where to start out and find some information. So first of all I'd like to show you the merge field list. This is a list of all the merge fields you can use within Action Step. So we go to admin and then we go to document assembly and in here you'll see merge field list. Now this is a complete list of all the merge fields that you can use in your document and email templates. As you can see this system has 2,274 different merge fields. Each system is different and every time you create custom data in relation to contacts or in relation to matters then these will be added to the merge field list so it is constantly changing. So we can look across here and we can see the data source. So this is where the merge field relates. This is the merge field name. So this is the actual name we use in our merge field. There is a description and some other information which we will go through when we look more in depth into document templating. The second thing I want you to have a look at is if we go to the help and we look at merge field options. This is a really useful article. So just merge field options. We can print this if we want to keep it on our desktop, but this is some great options that we can use for our merge fields. This looks at participant types. So where a merge field relates to a participant of a particular type. And it looks at date and phone formats. There's lots of useful information and videos. So I would suggest you have a look here. Another tool that we have is again, if we go into document assembly, we have what's called the merge field test tool. And this is where we can test our merge fields to make sure that we have them correct before inserting them into a document or an email. So let's say, for example, we pick a matter and then we want to test our merge field. So we put it in double square brackets, as you can see. Now, if I generate that output, that should give me the action ID. So that should give me 20. So I know that merge field is correct. Now, for example, if I change that to action name, generate output, that will give me the name of the matter. So I can use that in my email or in my Word document. One big warning, do not copy and paste from here into a Word document. You are copying and pasting from a website into a Word document and you may have some issues where that merge field will not work. It is always better to retype it. Now I just wanted to show you really quickly, there are two ways to put merge fields into Word documents. One is the double square brackets just like that. And the other is where we actually insert a merge field and I do prefer this method. So if we go to insert in Word and then down to field, the category is mail merge and the field name will be merge field. It's the same every single time. And we put in our merge field without the square brackets, just like that. Now, when we're dealing with these type of merge fields, this is just the title of the merge field. We can change this to that and it won't affect it. It will still bring across the action ID. To see the actual merge field itself, we need to right click and hit toggle. Now, this tells us our merge field name. Now, if I was to change this and generate in this document, we would actually get the action name here, regardless of what's in the title. Now, the reason that this is helpful is because sometimes our merge fields can get very, very large and it can put off the formatting of the document. So if we enter it like this, we can make it as big or as, as little as we need. And I would suggest doing it this way for those starting out. So just an example of that, is here. These two are exactly the same merge fields, but as you can see, 
this one you can see much easier because they're labelled and the merge field is underneath. However, this one looks much more messier and it's as they get bigger. So I hope that was helpful. And that's the end of our first lesson in templating. And in the next one, we'll look at some letterheads and I'll go through the changes with you and you'll also have access to those letterheads. Thank you.